Okay, so question one on heat is the barbecue. Todd is having a barbecue for his friends to celebrate his birthday. The cooking plate on the barbecue is made of aluminium, which has a specific heat capacity, 897 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. The burner on the barbecue is made of cast iron, which has a specific heat capacity of 460 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Use the above information to describe the heat absorbing abilities of aluminium compared to cast iron. Okay, well, uh, if we compare the, uh, the specific heat capacity, we can see that um, aluminium over here has uh, almost double, almost double the specific heat capacity of um, iron. And what that means is that uh, it takes, um, <coughs> excuse me, rough, if it's, um, let's, let's write this down, it's roughly, roughly times two for um, aluminium, that means the, the heat capacity is roughly times two. So it would take uh, twice the amount of energy um, to raise it by the same temperature. So uh, for one degree, for instance, it's going to take um, eight, 460 joules um, to raise a piece of iron, one kilogram, by one degree. It's going to take 897 joules to raise a kilogram of aluminium by one degree. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, uh, deals with that. So another way to look at it, you could say aluminium absorbs more heat than um, iron. Okay, moving on. B. Todd starts the barbecue and the aluminium plate becomes hot. He throws a small piece of ice on the aluminium plate to see how hot it is. The ice or the aluminium plate? Probably to see how hot the aluminium plate is. The initial temperature of the ice is minus 4 degrees Celsius. First it slowly melts and then boils into steam. On the axis below, sketch a graph to show how the temperature changes when ice is heated until it turns to steam. Okay, so we're going to assume we start at time equals zero here, and uh, that's also minus four degrees uh, Celsius, um, and it's going to increase in temperature, and then at the point where it, uh, that ice has to turn from a solid to a liquid, there's going to be a time where the temperature is steady as that heat is going into breaking bonds and doing things. So the temperature is not going to increase, but the time will still tick on by. Once it's melted, it's then going to increase again um, up until the point where it begins to turn to steam, to evaporate um, or vaporize. Um, and uh, once again, it's going to take extra energy to do that. So it's not going to raise the temperature. It's just going to take time um, and then he's going to go into breaking those bonds and overcoming um, the, yeah, the, the attraction between molecules. And then once again, once that's completed, it's going to increase in temperature again. Um, and um, oh, part C says, on, I was going to label it beforehand, but on, C says on your sketch, label the parts of the graph that represent melting and boiling. So this part here is melting, and the other part over here is boiling. And if we wanted, we could um, label the different states as well. So, so this from here would be our solid, and this section is liquid, and then from there onwards is gas. That's not necessary, it's just useful. Okay, D. Uh, the plate reaches a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. Todd tells his friends that even though the barbecue plate is 300 degrees Celsius, the water in his outdoor swimming pool, which is 20 degrees Celsius, has a lot more thermal energy in that uh, in it than the barbecue plate. Okay, sounds tricky, but if you've studied this, you'll know it's not that tricky. State the meaning of the terms thermal energy and temperature, and explain why Todd thinks that the swimming pool water has a lot more thermal energy in it than the barbecue plate. So uh, this is the excellence question. So we're going to um, identify, this, this, is, this is kind of background here, yeah? and then this is the actual question. And you'll notice the question has two parts to it. One, is state the meaning uh, of the terms thermal energy and temperature. So that's that's one part. This is just a strategy for answering tests, is identifying the parts you have to answer. And explain. So we've got to do an explanation of why Todd thinks the swimming pool has more thermal energy than the barbecue plate. So first of all, thermal energy 
thermal energy, what is thermal energy? That is the total amount um, of energy in the material. So you take all of the atoms in uh, the swimming pool and you, look, you add up all the energy that each of those atoms have and that's what the thermal energy is. The other one, temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average energy. So it's the average um, kinetic energy, which remember the kinetic theory of matter, uh, the more kinetic energy a molecule has, the more temperature it has. Um, the, uh, so the, it's, this is the average uh, energy um, so of, of the particles. So key, key uh, contrast here is the thermal energy is the total amount of energy added up from all the particles and the temperature is the average energy per particle. So how does that, that's the first part of the question now. Now we have to explain why Todd thinks the swimming pool has a lot more uh, thermal energy in it than the barbecue plate. So remember thermal energy is a total so um, even though the uh, barbecue has um, approximately, what is it, 20 degrees to 300 degrees, that's 15 times, so the barbecue is 15 times the temp. Um, the pool itself is probably thousands, depending on the size of the pool, the, the pool um, is at least times a thousand, uh, possibly more, um, times the number of particles. Okay, it really depends on the size of the pool. So um, even though those 15 times, those number of particles in the, um, in the aluminium have 15 times the individual temperature, if you add all of that up to get the thermal energy, um, it's going to be much less than the total thermal energy of the particles in the pool. So that's what that's getting at. Um, yeah.